All right, we want to start our uh, continuation of what we started this morning. The way how the Buddha defined the five aggregates is very important to remember. He defined the uh, rupa. It is uh, disformed by cold, heat, hunger, thirst, contact with flies, mosquitoes, wind, sun, serpents. Therefore, it is called form. That means form is that which is subject to altering according to what it contacts. Sometimes it is called oppressed. Oppressed by uh, cold, heat, thirst and so forth. Contact with flies, mosquitoes and so forth. The form is oppressed. We all know when it is very hot our form is not in good shape. <laughs> when it is very cold, it is not in you know, good shape. When it is uh, bitten by snakes and this and that, if uh, 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 a lot of wind and uh, so forth, various things affect the form. And this is how it is uh, defined. A Pali it is called Rupati to Rupa. Rupana means uh, we cannot find the real uh, etymological uh, sense, but uh, traditionally in text, uh, even in the this uh, Sanghita Nikaya, it is defined as Rupana. Rupana means oppressed, oppressed by all these things. Feelings or Vedana, that definition is very simple. It feels pleasure, pain, neither pain nor pleasure, therefore it is called feeling. Very simple definition. Perception, people always ask, what is the difference between consciousness, perception, and so forth? If we remember these definitions, it will be very easy for us to understand the difference between these uh, various uh, uh, elements. Sanya, or perception, it perceives blue, yellow, red, white, uh, therefore it is called perception. That means it perceives color, shape, size. Perhaps these days using various uh, uh, modern technology we even can perceive the weight. You stand on the scale you can see the weight. <laughs> uh, that also should be added to this one. And um, you can perceive uh, 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 various forms uh, in letters, characters, and so forth. When you look at the piece of paper, you can see the, the ink. Uh, of course, all these are not mentioned here, black and red and blue, and only very few things are mentioned. From what is mentioned, we can infer and understand what is not mentioned by the same rule. Only few examples are given here for us to include what is not included. Then Sankara is the very important uh, aggregate to remember the definition of Sankara. That is the most important not others are unimportant, but this is more important than others. They construct 
the condition form as form, feeling as feeling, perception as perception, volitional formations as volitional formations, consciousness as consciousness, therefore they are called volitional formations. Uh, that may need little explanation. This, def this uh, translation and the meaning is not very clear. Pali terms is Sankatang Abhisankaroti ti bhikkave tasma sankara ti uchati. That definition, Pali definition, has a very precise meaning. Sankatang Abhisankaroti. Sankhata means that which is made of causes and conditions. Something made of causes and conditions is repaired, modified, changed. That is the nature of Sankhara. Sankhara means uh, modifications, repairing. Uh, Remodeling. What is repairing? Uh, remodeling is what is already existing as a result of causes and conditions. Sankhatang. Sankhata means that which is that which has come into existence through causes and conditions. That's called Sankhata. Sankhara is that formation. That is why mental formation is called Sankhara. That is formations, forming. Sankhata, that which has already been formed. So that which is formed, something, uh, uh, this is already formed. I can modify it, change it, change the shape. I melt it and uh, form into something else and uh, change the uh, size, shape, color, appearance and so forth. So that which exists as a result of causes and condition is co reconditioned by other condition. That's, that is why they are called Sankhara. San yeah. Everything. You can put anything under the sun, under Sankara, in the general, widest sense of the term. When we talk about the five aggregate, of course, we put them in the narrower category. Sun, moon, you know, sky, what you call the things in the universe, the house, trees, all anything is Sankara. So, in this particular uh, five aggregates, Sankara means uh, the form is being formed by other conditions. Consci uh, feeling is conditioned by other, other conditions. Perception is conditioned, volitional formations are conditioned, and the consciousness is conditioned by various other conditions. And that conditioning factor is called Sankara. Conditioning factor is called Sankara. We condition things through words, thoughts and deeds. When we condition things with our thoughts, they are called Chitta Sankara. When we condition things through words, they are called Vachi Sankara. When we condition things with the body, they are called Kaya Sankara. What do we condition? We condition our karma through thoughts, words and deeds. 
Then vijnana or last aggregate. So we must remember the difference between sanya and vijnana. Sanya and vijnana. Sanya is the third aggregate, vijnana is the last aggregate. Vijnana is cognition. It cognizes sour, bitter, pungent, sweet, sharp, mild, salty, bland, therefore it is called consciousness. Sanya is more superficial. It is uh, uh, consciousness uh, that uh, uh, does the recognition, acceptance, registration, keeping record. The sanya is more uh, superficial. And the, of course, both has nya. Uh, I think you remember in uh, some places uh, these three stages are explained in three uh, similes. Sanya, Vinya, Panya. All have Nya as at the end. Nya is to know. The root is Nya, to know. Sanya is just like child's recognition of gold. When you put a, go put a piece of gold in front of a child, child knows its color, that's all. In um, Asian countries, I don't know whether, it, whether you do it here, uh, when, when, the child's, uh, uh, when the child is going to give a solid food, uh, they have, there's a ritual. They put various uh, metal, silver, gold, copper, coins, some in, things in front of Child goes to the gold color. That's all child knows, the color. Uh, then, uh, vinya is like uh, adult's knowledge of gold. When adults take a piece of gold in his hand, he roughly knows the value of it, market value, the weight, and uh, what he can make out of that gold. But he does not know all the nitty-gritty details of how the gold is formed. You take it to a goldsmith or metallurgist who is an expert of uh, gold. He will tell you everything about gold. How long it takes to form, what are the conditions, how long it remains in the ground, where it can be found, how uh, he, they define the carrot, how many carrot, uh, uh, you know, 18 carats or 20 carats or 25 carats and this and that. Uh, how much uh, it should be mixed with other metal to make uh, uh, things, uh, jewelry and so forth. So everything about gold he will know. Panya is like that. So this is a grade, degrees, sanya is the basic, vinya is the middle, and panya is the highest. In this uh, uh, anal an analogy, we can see sanya is the basic, vinya is little mature, higher, and panya is the highest. Since even nya, even uh, uh, feeling, feeling is actually uh, real feeling comes from vinya, vinyana, because uh, that is where you recognize the feeling. Uh, sanya is. Uh, very uh, uh, blurry. Uh, when it comes to vinya, it is settled. And then we comes to panya, then panya knows what the Vedra feeling is. So anyway, this is how it is defined. 
then um, uh, the causes and conditions for the manifestations of aggregates also are very important to remember. Four great elements are the causes and conditions for the manifestations of the form aggregate. Form aggregate manifest uh, because of the presence of four elements. Contact is the cause and conditions for the manifestations of, the, of feelings aggregate. Contact. We all know in the dependent origination, contact is the, is the cause of feeling. Again, contact is the cause and conditions for the manifestations of, of the perception aggregate. Without contact, we cannot perceive anything. We first have to have sensory contact. And the contact and uh, contact is the causes and conditions for the manifestations of formations aggregate, sankhara. Now, uh, feeling, perceptions, and mental formations are caused by uh, contact. Then. Name and form or mentality and materiality is the cause and conditions for the manifestation of the consciousness aggregate. Mentality and materiality are the causes and conditions for the manifestations of consciousness aggregate. Uh, that is very true in the Mahanidana Sutta, if you remember, uh, dependent on uh, mentality and materiality, uh, consciousness arises, dependent on consciousness, mentality and materiality arises. And dependent on mentality and materiality, contact arises. In Mahanidana Sutta, it doesn't say dependent upon six senses, contact arises. Mahanidana Sutta said dependent upon mentality and materiality, contact arises. Anyway, that of course confirms with the Mahanidana Sutta. Then consciousness cannot exist apart from the five aggregates. So, four stations, four aggregates are necessary for consciousness to exist. Four aggregates are, what are the four aggregates? Form, feeling, perceptions and uh, mental formations. These four aggregates are important basis, foundation for consciousness to arise, consciousness to exist. But of course, in other places like in Mahanidana Sutta, Buddha has given uh, seven stations of consciousness and so forth. Uh, these are extension of these four aggregates. But without uh, four aggregates, even in those seven stations of stations where consciousness exists, there has to be at least at least one of the other four aggregates for consciousness to exist. Now with this, uh, I have a uh, few other things to mention. Buddha said even in the Mahanidana Sutta, all our languages, all our definitions, all analysis, every old logic, everything is there to express 
mentality and materiality together with consciousness. And the same thing is said in Sanyutta Nikaya. There are, uh, there are these three pathways of language, pathways of uh, designation, pathways of description that are unmixed. This is very important. Pathway of language, pathway of designation, pathway of description that are unmixed, unmixed. What is this unmixed language, description and designation? That is, that were never mixed, that are not mixed, being mixed, that will not be mixed, that are not rejected by the wise by, by wise ascetic and brahmins. That is the description. What does it mean? Then Buddha again says, this refers to the five aggregates of the past, present and future. That means when we talk about the five aggregates of the past, we have to talk in past tense, which will never mix with the present tense or future tense. Whenever we talk about the present five aggregates, we talk in the present tense, which will never be mixed with the past tense or future tense. When we talk about the future five aggregates, we have to talk in future terms, future tense, which will never be mixed with the present tense and the past tense. That's what it means. That is, whatever forms, feeling, perception, thoughts and consciousness has passed, ceased, uh, changed, the term, label and uh, description was ap applies. Was applies to that. That is the past tense. And not term is or the terms will be. Again, whatever form, feeling, perception, thought and consciousness has not been born, has not become manifest, the term, label and description will be applied, will be within parenthesis, applies. Not the term is or the term was. Whatever form, feeling, perception, thought and consciousness has been born, has become manifest, the term, label and designation is, designation is applies, that is present tense. Not the term was or the term will be. That means this is Although it appears very simple, but it has a very deep, profound meaning. That means, past aggregates are past. They are no longer there. Finished. Kaput. No, nothing existing. Past aggregates. Present aggregates are now here existing. They will never go to the future aggregates and future aggregates will exist, will arise, not from the present aggregates, but from the future causes and conditions. So, it means impermanence of these five aggregates is embedded in the five aggregates and that can never change. Past aggregates, is past, that is why I uh, uh, said this morning when I was mentioning Upekha, uh, Sankhara Upekha, past Sankharas means all five aggregates, not only volitional formations, all the five aggregates of the past are past. All the present aggregates 
are changing, all the fuge aggregates will change. And we, had, we can do nothing about it except accepting them with a equanimous attitude. That is what is called, in short, Sankara Upekka. So, uh, in the Mahanidana Sutta, it uh, gives a very broad meaning of that all languages, uh, designations, pathways, uh, logic, all are used to express the mentality, materiality together with consciousness. That means we can not find anything within human domain of knowledge which does not belong to mentality, materiality together with consciousness. You name anything that, that may fall either into form or feeling, perceptions, thoughts or consciousness. In order to express these five aggregates, five aggregate Buddha put in another form, that is mentality and materiality together with consciousness. He said together with consciousness because if we simply mention mentality and materiality, that would include only form, feeling, perceptions, uh, form, feeling, uh, perceptions and uh, volitional formations, not consciousness. And therefore, in order to include all the five aggregates, he said mentality, materiality, together with consciousness. So, Nama does not include consciousness? So, you say Nama Rupa? Nama Rupa. In the Nama, in, in that division, mentality and materiality, materiality is form. Yes. Mentality is uh, feeling, perceptions, thoughts. And when Buddha added consciousness in addition to uh, these three, he specifically wanted to bring name or uh, consciousness in order to complete the mentality and materiality. Because uh, uh, when we say materiality, uh, mentality, uh, consciousness is not included there because uh, consciousness is treated as separately in the Mahanidana Sutta. And that also is an uh, important aspect to remember. That is, this is another thing Buddha mentioned there. Who is Dhamma teacher? And who sees the Dhamma? Dhamma teacher, he says, but regarding Paticca Samuppada, regarding five aggregates, regarding six senses, and regarding the uh, elements. He said the same thing, changing few words here and there. If one teaches the Dhamma for the purpose of revulsion towards form, feeling, perception, thought and consciousness, for they are fading away and cessation, one can be called a bhikkhu who is speaker on the Dhamma. Dhamma teacher means one who teaches Dhamma for the purpose of revulsion towards form, revulsion towards form, feeling, perception, thought and consciousness. And for their fading away, for their cessation, that individual, that person is called Dhamma teacher. 
That means one who teaches asada adinava nisarana asada adinava okara sankilesa nisarana o nekam in relation to aggregates, that person is the Dhamma teacher. That means he teaches Dhamma the benefit of these things, the, no, the, the enjoyment, enjoyment of the aggregates and their danger, the degradation, defilements and uh, uh, renunciation and the risk and the benefit of renunciation. Talking about impermanence, unsatisfactoriness and selflessness of the five aggregates. To that action, that individual is called Dhamma teacher. Okay? Uh, then Dhamma practitioner. Dhamma practitioner, one who practices Dhamma, practices for the purpose of revulsion towards the form, feeling, perception, thought and consciousness and for their fading away and cessation, one can be called a bhikkhu who is practicing Dhamma. Practicing in accordance with the Dhamma. Dhamma nu Dhamma Patipatti. We recite every day, Imaya Dhamma nu Dhamma Patipatti Buddha Pujemi. Imaya Dhamma nu Dhamma Patipatti Dhamma Pujemi. Imaya Dhamma nu Dhamma Patipatti Sangham Pujemi. What do we mean by Dhamma nu Dhamma Patipatti? That means, that we practice Dhamma, we practice uh, the Dhamma for the purpose of revulsion towards the form, feeling, perception, thought and consciousness and for their fading away and cessation. Because of that practice we can say we are practicing Dhamma. Then, Who is the one who is uh, working towards uh, uh, attainment of Nibbana or one who has attained Nibbana? Same thing, Buddha said, if through revulsion towards form, feeling, perception, thought and consciousness and through their fading away and cessation, one is liberated by non-clinging, then that one is called one who has attained Nibbana. <coughs> now with this, <coughs> I want to uh, come to the last stage of this uh, uh, talk. That is the, the whole purpose of studying the five aggregates. <coughs> you remember at the end of Paticca uh, Samupada, uh, we recite a very important stanza. <coughs> that is, Aneka Jati Sangsaran, Sandha Visang, Anibhisang, and so forth. Uh, perhaps you may not want to listen to Pali so much, but let me read in English that we all know by heart, by now. Through many a birth I wandered in samsara, seeking but not finding the builder of this house. Sorrowful is to be born again and again. O house builder, thou art seen, thou shalt build no house again. All thy rafters are broken, thy rich pole is shattered, the mind has attained the unconditioned, achieved is the end of cravings. This is very important thing to remember in relation to the five aggregates. In samsara, it is this, this five aggregate that kept on rolling from life to life, life to life, life to life, life to life. And there are two things the aggregates, that the aggregates put together. 
aggregate separately can can do nothing. Just like uh, when you talk about a house, all the material are put together and uh, have a, has certain shape and uh, we have a certain concept of house. But when the lumber, tiles and uh, you know uh, uh, screws and nails and cement and all these are separate here and they are scattered, you cannot call it a house. So these aggregates have to be put together. Aggregates are put together by two factors. That is greed and ignorance. Greed glued them together. That is a gluing factor. Ignorance give a shape, appearance. So, uh, what is this house? This house is called the body. Gehang. In the disco, in this uh, stanza, we say, "Puna gehang na kahasi." O house builder, thou shalt build no house again. The house here means the body. Together with its perception, thought, consciousness and feelings. And Buddha said, I had been wandering in samsara, looking for, looking for you who build this house. Now I have seen you. Now you cannot build house anymore. Why cannot you house build anymore? Uh, all thy rafters are broken. Ridge pole is shattered. Once these two things are broken and shattered, house collapse. So five aggregates disintegrate. Five aggregates disintegrate. Disintegrate when these two factors are destroyed. What are the two factors? Greed and ignorance. How can we destroy greed and ignorance? Only by one way, one method. That is following the Noble Eightfold Path. For Whenever we talk about the path in the Buddha's teaching, there is no other path other than the Noble Eightfold Path. Whether we call it Sotapatta, Sotapanna Magga, when we call Sotapanna Magga the path for stream entry, that is a Noble Eightfold Path. When we talk about uh, uh, path for any ordinary person to follow Buddha's teaching, that path is Noble Eightfold Path. No other path, no other path can bring us to enlightened uh, stream entry, once returner, never returner, and so forth. So, in the no, supramundane noble eightfold path, we call the path, we say magga phala, there magga is noble eightfold path, phala is the fruit of practicing noble eightfold path. So, by following that, we bring these two factors to an end. What are the two factors? Greed and ignorance. In the dependent origination, Buddha said, when the ignorance is disappeared, entire dukkha khanda, aggregate of suffering, collapse. In the uh, Dhamma Chakka Pavatana Sutta, he said, when the greed is completely vanished, disappeared, then the whole mass of suffering, the ag aggregates of suffering comes to an end. So in Paticca Samuppada, he said, when ignorance is ended, suffering comes to an end. In uh, Dhamma Chakka Pavatana Sutta, he said, when greed is brought to an end, mass of suffering comes to an end. That is what he said in this discourse. So mass of suffering is five aggregate, five aggregates, 
it has it can be brought into an to an end by removing the glue that aggregates are put together and then in the brahma nimantana sutta in madhyamini kaya and kevada sutta in dikini kaya buddha has made a very beautiful statement which is, which has a very profound meaning even some uh, scholars have uh, difficulty in understanding it uh, and we try to make some sense out of it uh, there was a monk who uh, did not understand where the consciousness ends consciousness is part of the five aggregates he was wondering where the consciousness ends he went all over asking everybody finally it is said that he went to see a maha brahma and asked him whether he knows where consciousness ends bra maha brahma said uh, my dear friend why did you come this far have you seen the buddha and your backyard why don't you go and ask him even i go to him when i have a problem and he is my he is my guru and you came all the way to see me go ask him <laughs> so he went back and asked the buddha he asked the buddha uh, he has in in it is in recorded in pali uh i i just tell you the meaning in english where do earth water fire and air no footing find where are long and short small and great fair and foul where are name and form wholly destroyed when we say name and form all five aggregates are mentioned included where consciousness is signless boundless or luminous and where where do earth water fire air no footing find i think i repeat it where consciousness is signless boundless or luminous then the buddha answered the question he answered where consciousness consciousness is uh, signless boundless or luminous that is where do earth water fire air and air no footing find they are both long and short small and great fair and foul they are a uh, name and form wholly destroyed with the cessation of consciousness this is all destroyed so when the consciousness become signless boundless or luminous that is where earth water fire air comes to an end that is where both long short small great fair and foul comes to an end that is where name and form completely destroyed with the cessation of consciousness all this are destroyed now what is this where consciousness is signless boundless or luminous some people say nibbana we cannot talk in terms of 
consciousness when we talk of Nibbana, because there is no, uh, the word used here, Vijnana. Vijnana has, Vijnana has never been used for Nibbana. Here Vijnana, free from all this air, water and so forth means that consciousness is not oppressed. You know, when we define the, the elements, we said earth element form, form is that which is oppressed. Rupang, rupati to rupang, that which is oppressed by cold, wind, sun, rain, and gadflies, mosquito bites, and heat, and so forth. Because earth element is there, water element is there, fire elements there, air elements is there. Now this consciousness we is, will not be oppressed by any of these things. Why? Because there is no earth element, water element, fire element and heat element. And short, long, high, low, middle, uh, or superior, inferior, none of these things exist. What is this consciousness? This is the consciousness, all luminous, you see, signless, boundless, all luminous. What is signless consciousness? Signless, signless means uh, animitta. There are three states, animitta, Appanihita and sunyata. Animitta means no sign of greed. Not only, not only there is no greed, but there is no sign of greed. That means there is no even a stain, not a possibility, not even a haunting of greed. Greed is completely gone. Second is a panihita, that means it is, there is no direction, east, north, west, south, up and down for this consciousness, no direction, a panihita. Sunyata is no even haunting of uh, self. So the the consciousness which is free from total greed, total ignorance, total notion of self, is the consciousness of an enlightened person. Enlightened state consciousness is boundless, all luminous, all shining, all the time. And it is the, that consciousness which is not bound to oppression by elements, all other conditions. And once one attains that state of consciousness, then name and form, ase sang uparujyati, completely destroyed. That means name and form cannot take root in that state of consciousness. So that is where all the five aggregates, all the what you call um, aggregates of clinging or aggregates subject to clinging cease. This morning we mentioned the aggregates of clinging or aggregates subject to clinging, pancha upadana kanda, Pancha upadana khanda sees at that stage. Now this is uh, uh, consciousness with form uh, and name means the uh, asankhara, uh, that, that is why Buddha said in this uh, uh, my mind has become unconditioned. Visankara gatan chittan. The visankara, the 
consciousness liberated from sankharas has this state and therefore name and form does not apply to that state of consciousness, that consciousness. Name and form is used for uh, consciousness which is not free from sankara. This is visankara chitta. And when Buddha said visankara gatan chitta, my mind has says, uh, became unconditioned in this discourse. When the mind became unconditioned, in that unconditioned state, nothing can affect. The unconditioned mind can, uh, can, cannot be affected by name and form. Name and form is used for sankhara, gata, chitta, that is uh, uh, consciousness which is subject to uh, sankharas. Uh, you know in the dependent origination and so forth, Sankara Pacha Vinyana Vinyana Pacha Nama Rupa. That Nama Rupa there refers not to enlightened person's state of consciousness. That Nama Rupa refers to unenlightened person's consciousness. Therefore, Nama Rupa Pacha Salayatanam or Nama Rupa Pacha Paso Pasa Pacha Vedana and so forth. Those things, uh, the, the, the chain of dependent origination factors continue. In the enlightened person's consciousness does not fall into that category of name and form. No. But it still has a body and a mind. Body and mind is there. Body and that is the mind which is called uh, 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 anidasana. Ani, uh, I didn't have time to explain the meaning of anidasana. Anidasana means uh, which does not have any uh, sign to uh, show uh, nidasana is called uh, a mirror. Mirror. Uh, it doesn't have mirror. What does the mirror do? Mirror do? It reflects. It reflects objects, images. Enlightened person's mind became so free, nothing can reflect in it. For the earth, water, fire, all these elements will not reflect in that consciousness. Therefore, it is called anidasana, without reflecting objects in it. And therefore, the term mentality and materiality does not affect and uh, does not apply to his state of mind. 